The Lord be with you. Uh, t two things about our service. We're going to have a temple talk by our health ministries team, by Marcy, actually, is going to do it. Uh, during, the, the, while the offering is being gathered. Our gospel text is probably the most troubling and disturbing text in the New Testament, maybe even all of Scripture. And um, I, I struggled over a sermon. <laughs> in fact, I rewrote my sermon from last night. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Our, um, th the text is, a parable, the parable of Jesus about the dishonest steward and Jesus commending him for his shrewdness. A thief got away with murder and Jesus commends him. So we'll see what that means for us. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the only Sovereign who dwells in light, Christ Jesus who came to save sinners, the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We come to you with repentant hearts. Forgive us for shallow thankfulness. Forgive us... Forgive us for setting our hopes in fleeting treasures. Forgive us our neglect and thoughtlessness. Bring us home from the wilderness of sin and strengthen us to serve you in all that we do and say. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is joy in heaven over every sinner who repents by the grace of God in Christ Jesus, who gave himself up for us all. Your sins are forgiven you, and you are made free. Rejoice with the angels and with one another. We are home in God's mercy, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. God among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths. Turn our minds to your wisdom and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Our first reading is from the eighth chapter of Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring ruin to the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from the second chapter of First Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior 
who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do, now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that, when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the (coughs) children. Excuse me, then are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. My apologies to the children, (laughs) because this pastor's imagination could not come up with a children's sermon on this text. Two masters. It's a disturbing text, and you can tell that even Luke is disturbed by it, because we get all those sayings at the end, which are supposed to help us interpret the text, but they are of little help. I mean, what does it mean to be welcomed into eternal homes uh, by our friends? uh, There's certain things about this text that are a mystery. And if you, uh, the commentators are all over the place on this, And what I found is the simplest thing is let's just take the parable at face value. There was a rich man who had a dishonest steward. The fact that Jesus commended, uh, by the way, I haven't found anybody that likes the characters in this parable. The, The shrewd, dishonest manager is commended. That's 
the most disturbing thing. There are modern examples of this, aren't there? Uh, let me give you two. When the military buys tools, do they get a good deal? It's like uh, the purchasing agent, he was a military man, is going to buy thousands of tools, 25,000 hammers, and he pays $119.95 for each. I could have gotten a better deal. Even me. 70,000 screwdrivers, $39.95 each. 30,000 pairs of pliers for $90 each. Huge overpayment. Those that look over these things say, hey, this seems to be out of order. Let's have an audit. By the time the audit is completed, they find out the guy that made these contracts retired. And he went to work for the very company he bought the tools from. Don't you hate that? Athletic director of a college, of a university, big university, is going to make a contract for shoes. And of course, athletic shoe companies want their shoes to be shown in very prominent places because that sells shoes, athletic shoes. So he makes a multi-year contract with a company for half, for half of what other universities were getting. Why would he do such a thing? Well, he knew that there was a scandal that was about to break and he was going to lose his job. The scandal broke, he lost his job as athletic director, but who did he go work for? The very shoe company he made the contract with. He's a scoundrel. Don't you hate that? So then Jesus tells a parable about this scoundrel who his boss finds him making deals that profited him. So his boss says, hey, you can't be my manager anymore. Put the books in order. You're going to be fired. So he's got a couple of weeks lag time. Let me enter into a few deals with people because I don't want to beg and I don't want to dig ditches. So he does so. And then through the manager, Jesus commends this shrewd person this dishonest manager. And then Jesus says, and don't you find it disturbing? I might as well catch up. And this master commended the dishonest manager because he acted shrewdly for the children of this age. We could say the citizens of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the Children are the citizens of light. Who are the citizens of light? You and me. Those who know the gospel. Those who love God. Those who worship God. Jesus seems to like, we could say, unscrupulous, shrewd characters, doesn't he? Let me give you a few, a few examples. The tax collector, a tax collector, who goes to pray one day. And when he realizes he has a problem with somebody, he sets down the gift that he was going to give to the temple, goes and makes amends, comes back and says, Dear God, forgive me. But the Pharisee, praying next to him and says, Dear God, don't let me be like that man. And Jesus commends the tax collector. 
Zacchaeus, another tax collector. Jesus goes and eats in his home. Zacchaeus, realizing the kingdom of God is before him and Jesus promises to rectify any wrong he had done. The prodigal son, which comes right before this text, the story of the prodigal son, who goes off and squanders his money, comes back and begs his father to take him back, and his father treats him as a son and loves him. The woman caught in adultery, who doesn't seem to have much to offer society, but Jesus promises her a new start. You see, Jesus has an affinity for scoundrels. The list could go on. The Apostle Paul, wasn't he a scoundrel? A murderer of the children of light. Now, a careful reading of the text shows that Jesus wasn't praising the man because he was a scoundrel and a cheat. Jesus was praising the man because he had a single-minded devotion to one thing, his God. What was his God? Me and money. A single-minded devotion. He'll do anything to make sure he's not separated from his God. Money. Single-minded devotion to a cause. Gives his entire heart, mind, and soul to the service of his God. Money, which he values most. That thing which he values most. So what can we learn from that? God wants us to have a single-minded devotion to what we are to value most, which is Almighty God. Jesus is basically saying, hey, what if we, the children of light, citizens of the kingdom of God, were to give such single-minded and complete devotion to the cause of the one and only true God? What if we would do that? Messiah Lutheran Church would transform the world, at least our community. An example of this is uh, from the movie The Fisher King. We can see Jeff Bridges and Robin Williams. Jeff Bridges is um, a... He, he plays Jack Lucas, the number one uh, talk show host in New York City. And a person calls up Jack Lucas and says to him, I'm enamored with these people down at the local nightclub. They seem to be so happy and so rich. And Jack Lucas says, oh, they're nothing but a bunch of yuppies. 1990s film. Oh, they're nothing but a bunch of yuppies. Remember what yuppies were? Young, upwardly mobile professionals. And then he says, you should just go down there and wipe them all out. And the guy does. Takes his shotgun down there. Kills seven or eight of them. And Jack Lucas, that night, is um, rehearsing because he's going to be in a movie. He's rehearsing his one line. That uh, his one line is, well, forgive me. And you see what the theme of the movie is. Jack Lucas, in a search for forgiveness, because while he's rehearsing that line, he sees on the news that this guy he talked to on the radio went and did try to wipe out all the yuppies at the nightclub. And then, as the movie goes on, Jack Lucas goes off the edge, becomes an alcoholic, loses his job, is mugged and is being beaten up, and they, the muggers pour gasoline on him and are about to light him on fire when out jumps from out of nowhere on the street a homeless person, Perry, 
Robin Williams, and he beats away the attackers. Later, later we find out that Perry used to be an English professor at a college, and the reason he was homeless was his life, wife was murdered at a nightclub by a man with a shotgun. And the movie is about Jeff Lucas, or Jack Lucas, trying to find forgiveness, putting forgiveness first in his life. Well, in all the stories of scoundrels, Jesus reminds us that God's mercy is there to save us, accept us, forgive us, and love us. By the way, that's what Jack Lucas found from Perry. Acceptance, forgiveness, and love, which eventually saved his life. We are citizens of light, and we are to return the favor. There's a world of people, scoundrels. Well, let's back up a second. That's supposed to be number one in our life. The knowledge that God is there to save us, accept us, forgive us, love us. Did you notice when the choir was singing, I couldn't help but notice the lyrics. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Isn't that a perfect, text, or a perfect song for this text? I'd rather have Jesus. And I'm going, really? Got a pile of silver and gold over here? And Jesus. What would we choose? Jesus commends the scoundrel for his single-mindedness to his God, silver or gold. And in so doing, he commends us and tells us, have that single-minded purpose toward your own God the true God, almighty God, who saves us, accepts us, forgives us, loves us. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. And now as so children of the light, we have a whole world out there trying to make that decision, trying to sort that out in their mind. What is their God? Versus, <clears throat> versus serving Almighty God. So we are to be people that accept them, forgive them, love them, so that God can save them. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Rejoicing in the Spirit's work among us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Giver of the feast, you have called the church to be faithful in little and faithful in much, and appointed us as heralds and apostles, teachers in faith and truth. Entrust to us the true riches of your grace, that we may fulfill your desire that everyone be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Lord, in your mercy. Generous one, you call all humanity to serve God above wealth. Disarm those who shed innocent blood and those who create violence in the world. Bring to justice those who are corrupt, predatory, or deceitful in their businesses. Relieve all who are burdened by unreasonable debt and protect any who are unemployed or threatened in their work, that all may find suitable and honest employment and receive just payment for their labor. Lord, in your mercy. God of nations, we pray for places in the world affected by conflict, war, and turmoil. We pray that your perfect peace and order be restored. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing, we remember before you those among us who are sick or who are recovering from illness or surgery. We remember especially Cindy Anderson, Lael Biella, Bryce Bauer, Carolyn Callan, Dennis Chappell, Pam Cole, Doris Embertson, Dennis Hess, Alan Malcolm, Annabelle Moore, Jan Snath, Jay Seward, Sean Snellen, Lucy Stilwell, Paul Thompson, Lawrence Tillotson and Kathy Zinter. Are there any others? We remember the faithful departed who make up the great cloud of witnesses. We remember especially Charles Dunn, Cindy Bass, Chet Britt, and Sean Shanklin. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I invite you to go ahead and do the offering while I'm speaking. Thank you. I'm Marcy Rosenketter, and I'm a member of the Congregational Care Committee, and I'm here to um, call your attention to an insert, Power of Prayer, and to share some examples with you. The Power of Prayer is persistent. Early in the 80s, a group of people began praying for Messiah's members. You'll recognize names, Lou Graves, Lynn Starr, and I'm sure you, many of you remember Betty Haas and Sally Fick. Nadine Melgren joined that group when she retired, and more recently, Mick Freeberg, Jean Barty, and I have joined the group, and we are called Prayer Support. We would be pleased to have you join us as we pray aloud on the second and fourth Wednesdays for all those on all our prayer lists and also our directory. The power of prayer is private upon your request. It is personal 
and it is precise, so I may be contacting you for updates at times. Our policy for the read aloud prayers for healing and wholeness is to remain on the list for a month unless you notify us to remove you sooner. Members having chemo, um, serious surgery, etc., will remain on throughout that period of time. And we've uh, added in parentheses on the back of your bulletin, which, which is where the prayer list is, the care facility that our members might be in in case you want to go visit. We also designed, as you see on the back of the uh, messenger, the chronic health issues for longer health issues. And these are especially good for friends and family. And remind you, you just heard the prayer opportunity that Pastor Dan invites us during every service to name aloud, or in our hearts, additional persons that we might want to bring to prayer. For the most number of parishioners praying, request an I pray prayer. Those members agree to stop and pray upon receiving this request, and then their name goes on the read aloud list. It allows more members to participate in Messiah's prayer ministry and do our mission, offer healing and care through prayer. Since I've tried to be prompt, I will be in Mission Hall by the welcome desk to answer any questions. And I thank you all for caring and participating in Messiah's prayer ministry. Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you. O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We come again to you, O God, giving you thanks that in this feast of mercy you have embraced us and healed us, making us one in the body of Christ. Go with us on our way, equip us for every good work, that we may continue to give you thanks by embracing others with mercy and healing. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And gracious Heavenly Father, <clears throat> We pray that as you healed the sick and welcomed the stranger, <clears throat> you bless those who leave this assembly to share the gifts of this table with our brothers and sisters who are shut in. May they be sustained by the love and prayers of this community and by the bread of life that satisfies all hunger. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First, an announcement I did not make, and that was we're changing to setting four from with one voice today. <laughs> and you did, you, you did famously well. I appreciate that. Uh, the other thing is there's two adult classes going on. The adult class on the book about uh, 12 traits of a, of a great church will be in the fellowship hall, and my class inquiry class, pastor's class, will be over in the library area. Mick. Hey, I'm glad you came up here. Guess what's happening tomorrow? <laughs> I've been married to Mick for 40 years tomorrow. <laughs> Um, tomorrow, Lydia Circle is meeting. Uh, we meet in the music room at 7 o'clock. And I'd like to invite all you women to come. Um, if you haven't ever been to one of our circle meetings, this is a good time to um, start coming. We're starting up now for the fall. And I'd like to see you all there. You mean I can't take you out for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, folks. This is... This is just a quick announcement. Next Saturday, I'm going to have a group of woodcarvers come over, woodworkers come over. We're going to make some stuff. This is what we're going to make. We're going to make some cars. We're going to put them together in kits, and then we're going to send them to the kids and let them decorate them. And once they decorate them, the kids can choose where they're going to go. So this is kind of filling two of the three of the our mission statements. One is gathering resources for all our growing ministries, the other one is nurturing youth, and the third one is offering healing and care to all in need. So please come on over to my place. We'll be a couple, three hours. No hard work is involved, no sweat, and, and no one will get hurt, I promise. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know me. Uh, read your, your uh, messenger. There's a few other announcements in there. Uh, uh, and those of you that are interested in uh, Financial Peace University, that is coming to Messiah soon. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
guided by the gospel, we... Go in peace, remember the poor.